This is Owl, and you're listening to the Literati Records Podcast. Podcast. Welcome to episode 95 of the Literati Records Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus, and I want to thank you for tuning in, turning on, and supporting independent music. My guest on the show today is Oakland metal band Owl, a band influenced by the new wave of British heavy metal that sprung up in the late 70s and early 80s, a movement that has influenced many awesome bands. Coming from Oakland, Owl is well aware of the amazing Bay Area metal tradition that has preceded them, and are intent on carrying that tradition forward in the 21st century. Consisting of three brothers, Clint, Kay, and Axel, and friend Melanie holding down the low end, Owl's profile continues to rise. But before we bring on Owl, I want to remind you about our 100th episode celebration at Lost Lake on Tuesday, October 29th. We have music lined up from And the Black Feathers, Patient Zeros, and Brooklyn band She Keeps Bees, making their first Colorado appearance. There may even be a couple surprises planned for the evening, so come on down and party with us. All the music on today's show comes from Owl's 2012 self-titled album and is available on their Bandcamp page. You can also find a complete track list in the show notes on our website at www. Dot literati records dot com and now present owl all right well i'm down here at lost lake tonight where uh, my guests are owl band from oakland california out on the road gonna make a wonderful noise here tonight looking forward to that how you guys doing doing pretty good i'm fucking stoked excellent well let's go around the table starting on my left and get names and instruments I'm Clint, and I play the drums. I'm Kay, I play guitar, vocals. And there's a couple other members up at the bar? That's true. We've got Melanie on bass, and the youngest one, uh, Axel, who also does guitar and vocals. Well, can you give us a brief history of how the band formed and how long you've been together? 
Our little brother Axel had the idea for the band. He had a few songs. And so he and I were hanging out and kind of jamming on these songs. Thought we would uh, ask Glenn if he wanted to come with us and do a demo. So we demoed the songs back in 2009, end of that year, and then uh, kind of kind of grew out of that. And eventually Melanie came along to our second show, or maybe it was our first show, and she wanted to join. So it became a band like that. She kind of forced her way into the band. Um, and yeah. We're damn glad she did. She's yeah. really good. <laughs> yeah. Kind of um, serendipitous that she was at the show. Yeah. We knew her before. Ah. But after she saw us play, she realized it was something that she wanted to be a part of. The seed started from our youngest brother, Axel. Um, because we turned him on to good music as he was a younger brother. We turned him on to Led Zeppelin and Budgie and the Ramones and stuff like that. And he, he was just, like getting obsessed with Rush and stuff and like yeah. songs were coming out. And like I was just like hanging out at the time, so like I had time to like play those songs with him. Cool. And it started getting cool. He took that stuff to heart and he just ran with it. Well, so there's this rumor, right, that Axel was only 13 when you guys all recorded that first demo. Is that fact or fiction? It would have been 15. Or will you leave it in mythology? Uh, I think maybe he was 15. 15? Yeah. That's still pretty sweet. I mean, that's, that's pretty young. Yeah. yeah. Well, your music definitely draws inspiration from the new wave of British heavy metal of the late 70s and early 80s. What is it about that period of music that has inspired so many great American bands? For me, I have to say that um, new wave of British heavy metal, the success of it was that it took the excesses away from 70s hard rock, the 70s arena rock, stripped it down, added a raw edge, added a DIY aspect, it took it back to the streets kind of, and that's what I love most about it. It's raw, it's angrier, it's for the streets, and it's for the kids, and that's what makes the new wave of British heavy metal cooler. Well, even with the new wave of British heavy metal influence, there's still always been a, a pretty strong tradition of metal coming out of the Bay Area and Oakland, where you guys are from. Uh, how yeah. much of that has influenced you guys? You know, bands like Exodus, Testament, Death Angel. I mean, that's stuff I grew up on. Yeah, I mean, I love all that stuff. Um, and it's like, not just for thrash, but metal has always been so great in the Bay Area. I couldn't tell you why exactly, but I think the Bay Area has the best metal scene in the world, even still. Yeah, it's it's a definitely wide, up wide there. Open place, but it's not like a sissy town either, you know, it's not like an indie rock capital. <laughs> but it's like, a, I mean, it's always been like a place where like artists can, if not thrive, at least like search around and look for something cool. And I think that, I don't know, maybe because it's just nice weather out there. Yeah. You know, metal bands want to be out there having a good time too. It's like a really good like mix of things there. You guys are definitely forging your own, you know, legacy and tradition in, with those great bands as well. So it's nice to have somebody carrying the torch forward. Yeah, we're trying to. It's, you know, we've got a great history and we've got a great present too. There are a lot of bands doing our kind of retro metal hard rock thing right now, which is awesome. And another thing worth mentioning about the Bay Area scene, I guess, is um, Bay Area is a big city with lots of musicians, but it's not necessarily an entertainment center like LA or New York. So people are more focused on just playing good music than becoming famous, which is what sets a lot of these bands apart. They're trying to be good, not popular. Well, you're in town tonight to play Lost Lake. How many dates are you out on the road for? I think we had 19 shows, or 18 shows. I think 21 shows. Yeah, three in the Bay Area. If you don't 18, count the local shows yeah, on this yeah. tour, on this trip. Yeah. We played San Francisco, Oakland, and Concord right before we left. And then we headed south, and now we got a week left. We toured we California home. with a really awesome band called Cragweller from Portland. Good buddies of ours. Incredible bands. And then, after California, we started making our way east. 
Arizona, Texas, New Mexico. Now here we are in Denver. Well, where are you off to next? Salt Lake. Salt Lake. Tomorrow? Day after? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. This is the part of the tour where we have a really long drive every day. Okay, yep. Don't get much sleep. <laughs> well, you mentioned some other buddies of yours. Um, who are some bands that you guys dig and you think our listeners should check out? Um, in the Bay, I have to say uh, Letcher's Gaze, Wild Eyes. I'm really into Hot Lunch and Glitter Wizard. Yes. Hot Lunch and Glitter Wizard. Yeah. Ooh. Have to look them up. Yeah. Definitely check those ones out. Yeah. Black Cobra, High and Fire. Residual Echoes. Or what is it? Residual Somebody? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's the band from San Diego? Shaking Pyramid. Oh, yeah. Lots of good bands in San Diego, too. Yeah, Shaking good. Pyramid, Harsh Toke, Joy. So, what track from your Owl album should we close this interview with? Uh, Do you have a favorite? I, I like that whole album. It's sweet, I tell you that. Yeah. Um, Gypsy River. <laughs> yeah. That's the hit. Opening oh, track. That's, that's the hit. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Gypsy River. Gypsy River it is, man. It's All right. Great. Thanks a lot for taking some time to meet with us, guys. Have Thank a great you. show tonight. Thank you Safe for the interview. Trip back home. Thank you. You're welcome.